Alright guys, we're going to jump into what I believe will be a lengthy review, so let's get right to it. If you recall, I reviewed the PlayStation Vita version of the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, but the Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus content never came to the handheld world on the Vita or the 3DS. But now it has. With the Nintendo Switch in mind, let's take a look and review the Switch version of the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. A lot of gamers know the story of the Binding of Isaac. It is similar to the biblical tale of Abraham and Isaac. Isaac and his mother live peacefully alone. A voice from above speaks to Isaac's mother about corrupting the sin from Isaac's soul. She interprets this as the voice of God, locks Isaac in his room away from the evils of the world, takes away all of his toys and drawings. Voice calls down to her again, demanding that she sacrifice Isaac as devotion to him. She bursts into the room with a butter knife. Isaac finds a trap door, jumps down into the basement to get away from his mother and to face all of the monsters that lurk beyond. Now I'm going to take one moment to uh, focus on the religious aspects of this. The Binding of Isaac obviously has religious tones. It's based on a biblical story. But I've seen a lot of people in the Switch community that have been really, really offended by the intro. I've seen some people even come to me saying outright that the game is anti-Christian or has an agenda against the Christian faith. So I just want to clear one thing up. I can't give you specifics because it's spoilers about the game's ending. But once you play through the game, the game clears up any skepticism about some nefarious undertone about the developers being anti-Christian. The game has religious tones to it, but it's not anti-Christian. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus, like all other versions of The Binding of Isaac, is a 2D top-down, random-generated, roguelike, Zelda-like, twin-shooter-like dungeon crawler. It's got all of those elements packed into it as you go through randomly generated dungeons. Now, the first thing we need to note on, this is The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. On the Vita and the 3DS, we have The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. So, from a handheld gamer's perspective, what do I get in Afterbirth Plus that wasn't in Rebirth? Well, you get all of the DLC that was added in the Afterbirth expansion and the Afterbirth Plus expansion. This totals up to the new Greed Mode difficulty, daily runs with online leaderboards, three new characters, four new dungeon variations, two new dungeons, both with new final bosses and the complete ending to the story, over 240 new items, weapons, and trinkets that you can pick up. A lot of balancing, new challenges, new enemies and bosses, variations of older bosses, and one of the biggest things, local co-op. In the Vita version and the 3DS version, you couldn't do multiplayer. In the Switch version, you can. Now, of all of these things, the biggest things to note on are greed mode and daily challenges. But before we go into detail of that, Let's just go from a newbie's perspective and explain what the gist of Isaac is. When you start a run through the game, you choose a character, and it, the game puts you in a randomly generated dungeon. These dungeons progress like the 2D Legend of Zelda dungeons. You walk into a room, enemies spawn in the room, the doors lock behind you. You have to defeat all of the enemies to unlock the doors and be able to move forward. You keep doing this over and over through the stage until you reach the boss room. Once you defeat the boss, you get to go to the next stage, next level. Now, it's a little bit more in-depth than that. There is a random element. You get random items in every run, random rooms, random enemies, and even bosses are generated randomly. So when you go through the basement in, in run one, you might get a completely different boss when you retry the game later. And that's really the part of the game that really makes it feel like there never really is an end to it. You have dozens upon dozens of conditions where when fulfilled, you will unlock new content, like characters, items, bosses, challenges, dungeons, game modes, the list goes on. And, and because every single run is completely different from any other run you do, even after you've played the game hundreds of times, it just feels like it's a game where content is constantly unlocking and it's a game that truly has no end to it. 
And of course, if all of the challenges and the normal runs aren't enough for you, the new Greed Mode added to Afterbirth adds a new level of intensity to the game. In Greed Mode, instead of going from room to room to room, you have one room where you're fighting off 10 waves of enemies coming at you, and there's a time limit. Wave 1 appears and you have 10 seconds to kill all of them. If you don't kill all of them by the time the timer runs down to zero, the second wave spawns while you're still fighting, and if you don't catch up then, the third wave and the fourth wave. And this keeps going, and the chaos can get literally crazy as the room fills up with enemies and bosses alike. That's an overwhelming amount of content. But if you want to talk about completion, you want to unlock all the story content so you can see all of, the, all of the bosses and all of the endings. Now to do that, you should know that each run, each successful run, could take anywhere from 20 to 30 or 40 minutes, depending on what character you're using and how good of a run that you get. But to do completion, you have to defeat the initial final boss, which unlocks the second final boss. Defeat that second final boss 10 separate times, and that unlocks the first Afterbirth dungeon. Then you clear the first Afterbirth dungeon and its boss to unlock the second Afterbirth dungeon, dubbed the Afterbirth Plus dungeon. You clear that dungeon, and you obtain the true final ending, and the story is technically over. Now that is a grand total of 13 successful runs, which is very difficult to do. So if you want completion time, if you're an expert at Isaac and you don't run into any problems in any of your runs, that is a bare minimum of six to eight hours of gameplay. Now, if you're a newbie or just someone coming back after not playing it for months, relearning the game, building up your skill, and unlocking all of the content would likely take you at least 20 to 25 hours. There's a reason a lot of people have said that they've spent hundreds of hours on Isaac, because it takes so long to truly unlock everything, even just the story-based content. And one thing I'll say about controls, I don't have a problem with any of the controls, but one confusing thing is how to do co-op. When you want to do couch co-op, you can have one Joy-Con per player. But you can't just hit the plus button on the second Joy-Con while you're in game to make your co-op character appear. You have to actually go out of the game, go into the Nintendo Switch's controller settings, and set them up as separate controllers. Once you do that, you can go into the game and spawn your co-op partner just fine. But unlike some other games, you actually have to go out into the Switch's settings to do that. Now let's get to presentation. Visually, The Binding of Isaac looks pretty much the same as it always has. It has a very retro look. There's a, there's a lot of jagged edges around the, around the drawn character models. And one thing to note is that the flash filter option from the PC version, the flash filter that made everything look smoother and look a lot better on PC, is not in the Switch version of the game. And that is a problem because in a lot of boss fights during animations, if you look closely on the TV, it's really pixelated and really blurry. So having that flash filter would have been really nice, especially when you're playing on the TV. The only other issue is slowdown when you're using certain abilities. You'll have situations come up every once in a while where you'll see the game go into some pretty severe slowdown for a couple seconds. This is most common with the character Azazel, the demonic winged character that can use charge attacks. If you give him specific abilities every time he attacks, it could cause some slowdown. Now, most of the time, this happens in greed mode, and only greed mode, but I've had it happen a couple times in a normal run as well. Now finally, let's talk about battery life. Just like I Am Setsuna, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus is going to give you a lot of battery life on the Switch. From 100% to 15%, we get... Full brightness and Wi-Fi on will get you 3 hours and 46 minutes. Full brightness with the Wi-Fi off, aka in airplane mode, will get you 3 hours and 50 minutes. If you have your brightness all the way down with Wi-Fi on, you'll get 4 hours and 54 minutes. And the big one, low brightness and no Wi-Fi will give you a grand total of 5 hours and 11 minutes. Since that is from 100% to 15%, that is an average of four to six hours of battery life. Lots 
and lots of battery life, especially compared to Power Hog games like Zelda. In conclusion, Afterbirth Plus is packed full of all the content you'll find in the PC version of the game. Although frame drops with certain upgrades and the lack of the flash filter will definitely cause some grievances. The plethora of new gameplay and story content is well worth the purchase, especially if you've played this game on a handheld and have never experienced true local co-op on the go. Reviews to Go rates the Nintendo Switch version of The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus an 8 out of 10. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out below or head to the website at www.reviews2go.com.